Here's to another episode of Uninterrupted the Shop, full of memorable and very unpredictable moments. Cheers, Cheers. to that. Yo, from the outside looking in, it seemed like Coach Harbaugh, cool as shit. Is he? Yeah, yeah, he cool. He's, That's a very yeah. competitive coach. Like, Every day, like he's... man, he'll be competing with us. Like we working out in the weight room, he's standing next to you, like. You see, what, <laughs> you see what I'm doing? I'm doing 60s. What you doing 40s? I'm like, I play quarterback, coach. I got to throw. I ain't doing no 60s. <laughs> <laughs> The NFL used to not allow hip hop. During the halftime show, there was choreography of crip walking. I was like, this is. It was so important. It was Like, I was like, this is crazy that this is actually on television screen. It really was. I was like, I can't believe I'm watching this. They had me but it was, it was. You think they had to get real Crips, or was those? <laughs> they had to sing by. I feel like, because I was, I was watching it with a friend, and the friend was just like, I feel like they could have gone crazy. I was like, they're protecting that check. Yes. <laughs> I was like, they're gonna make sure it's wrapped every year now. Okay, like, how did they get the Crip walking past them though? That's what I want to know. The bus I guess thing? maybe nobody said anything. It's kind of like again, skeet or something where yeah. they didn't know. Synchronized swimmers. It was beautiful. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Probably just didn't know. What was our favorite part of the halftime show? Dre really play piano? How hard is that as a musician? I play? feel like it's so hard to is do hard? all of that. I mean, like playing is different, but I'm like seeing all that. It's so. First of all, you're doing it so much for the camera. Like yeah. all of that's for the camera, but also it's like you have so many people screaming. It's like. Because the energy could take over. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes you outperform your body. That's what I'm, I, I get scared of. Like, that first Coachella, I don't remember. I remember coming in my room sweaty and being <laughs> like, oh, like, I was like, steam's coming off of you because it's cold and stuff like that. You remember, but you don't, I don't remember it. Like, the energy from the crowd is just intense. When you're watching a show like that, Jay, like, watching another artist, are you just purely watching it as a fan? Or are you watching going, damn, I love that. I might try that. I might yeah. Man, this 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 halftime was different because it's it's a lot of nostalgia on it, you know. Like I grew up with them, I, even though I'm from Medellin, Colombia, but Snoop Dogg for us is <laughs> it's, it's it's the gold. So you just them, became a fan. I'm always been a fan, you know. Like we grew up in Colombia with a lot of hip hop. Why I don't know why. But okay. just like you have a different perspective. Also, you've done Super Bowl. Yeah, I done the Super Bowl so before. We started with Bad Bunny. That's Shakira. the yeah. 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 yeah, it's crazy. Like a little yeah. Yeah, yeah, we did, and it was the first time. Shout out to JC because he has the vision of inclusion, right? So I love the fact there was Latinos on it. Now, you know, the, the whole mm -hmm. West Coast gang, and it was beautiful. Now, Lamar, for you, is watching as a football player and watching the game, are you pissed? Are you like, damn, we should be there? Uh, watching the game, uh, it's, I want to be in it. You, you want to be in that? I'm moment, really not a right? fan of either team. Exactly. But um, I had a feeling like the Rams was gonna win just because I felt uh, Aaron Donald was there before. Oh my god! And like I knew that like, if he get a chance to be one on one, can't nobody block that man. By the way, does everybody in the league know that if he one on one, you? Yeah, you it's, it's different with him. It's different. It's different with him. You gotta watch him. It gotta be two guys on him every play. Uh, every play. Literally. Every play. I say him and Lawrence Taylor is the greatest. Defensive players nah, in the true. history of sports. For sure. So when you're going against him, going that week, you you talk to the team like, yo, y'all got to double, keep him off. I really, to be honest with you, I really don't talk to my team like that, you know? Um, those guys already know what's going on. Like, yeah. we watch a film on that guy. We trying to game plan for him. Two men got to block him no matter what's going on, you know? Or I'll just be helping the line out by looking at one guy who might be the baby Aaron Donald, you know? Yeah, and I exactly. help him out by that way. But you got to have two guys on that man. That he man move, he move around a lot on the line? Oh, uh, well, they move him to the edge. He, he, he he'll move to the edge, he but moved uh, the edge a little bit though. Yeah, a little bit. Um, with, since Vaughn got there, he, he kind of didn't go to yeah, the edge no more. He's been at nose. Really. Yeah. Come on, let me ask you what. What do you think makes him so special? I don't. I really don't know. Probably his work. Uh, his work ethic. You know. Um, I see him doing something with knives, like slapping knives. Like that's probably to help him when offensive line trying to punch him, and he just getting his hand, getting their hands off him quick. So 
That's probably it, his birth ethic. And he just you go know, out Miles there and show Miles Garrett told me something. He said, what makes Aaron Donald the best? He said, he said I'm one of the best on the edge, for mm -hmm. sure. He said, but if you move me inside, I'm not strong enough. But Aaron Donald can do what I do, and he can do the inside. He said he's fast enough to rush the edge, strong enough to play the middle. He said, we've never seen anybody like that. Yeah, so his strength. That's what yeah, it's exactly. His strength. <laughs> his strength <laughs> is the answer. Stamina. Yes. By the way, you might not know this, but your first gig in that, one of your first gigs in LA, right? Mm hmm Was working on the Heartbreak video, right? Yeah, how'd you, did I, when I tell you that? Is that true? <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to remember, did we meet on that set? Yeah, we met on that set. I was just a PA. I think I argued with you at first, and then... Uh, you argue with me? About what? We all got in an argument about Biggie versus the Beatles. Oh, Do you right. remember that? I remember that. What was that about? What but was that but about? I know I wasn't defending the Beatles, because I... Didn't <laughs> no, no, no. You weren't, like, you weren't. You weren't. You weren't. We were talking about who was more impactful, who had oh, the most... Who had like, a bigger like impact. I did not know the Beatles at all. Oh. I, I didn't grow up with them. Of course like my kids, them. I just saw the get back thing. I was like, oh, these guys are cool. These guys got hits. <laughs> like, these got <laughs> real hits. Like, no, let it be. I don't know Really good. I mean, I know the history, there's some history of them, but I don't know much about They I don't started know, off by the way, covering black music, of course. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, it's rock music. Mm -hmm. and, and also, it's watching get back, which I really loved. It was cool to see them know that. But it's always someone that you want to have, like, a role model, right? Like, someone that you respect so much that you want to be like. Yeah. yeah. Like Who's like that for you? Pharrell, JC also. I grew up watching them, and I know more far the music, the impact and culture they have. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to be as Latino, you know, because we never had the, the opportunity to be on a global scale. When you see the rise of, like, Latinos in music, you know, whether it be a Bad Bunny who we had on the show, are you proud or are you competitive? You know, how are you feeling about just the other artists in the space? Man, I'm really proud. I'm really proud because we are looking for I was, I was, I was saying, like, I wanted the culture to grow up. Because I'm from Colombia, you know, reggaeton started in Puerto Rico. I'm on, on the side. It's like, like, kind of like Drake from Canada, that, you know, hip-hop is U.S., right? I'm from Colombia. And you guys from Puerto Rico are the one who created the, the reggaeton, you know? Like, I mean, it's a long story. Like, everything started always from Africa. Yeah. That's where humanity Course. started, period. Course. You just cannot, there's no other way. It's yeah. Africa. Then he jumps to Jamaica doing the dance out. With the drums and the Yeah, dance out. Then the Panamanians start doing the Spanish version of the dance out. Correct. The same melodies with a different lyric. What did they call it? Raga, from, from Panama. Then Puerto Rico, they, they took that sound and they started like speed it up a little bit more or slower. And that whole Wait, reggaeton. That was the hip hop. Yeah, and we were influenced from hip hop, hip -hop. New York. New baby. York, so New York. Exactly. So that's one for rap. <laughs> I'm keeping, I'm keeping you keep score. A, you keep the score. <laughs> Nothing travels like a song, like a, a melody. That's true. Like, I have that debate. You don't have to. Music is a universal exactly. language. People feel it. Yes. You know, I, I, mean, I can make a great show or make like something that's satisfying. Mm -hmm. And you may not want to watch it again. You might be like, oh, that's great. But you may not want to watch it. A good point. song. Over. Yeah. You'll play it over at your wedding. Over. It'll mean something to you. Point. It'll mean something to your kids. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's people who uh, I'm, you, you meet in Japan who are just like, yeah, like, I grew up on the Fugees. Mm -hmm. exactly. And it's like, I didn't, they've never been to America. They know the, the lyrics. They don't un even understand the lyrics. Yeah. Yeah. They just love it. Is a hit TV show bigger than a hit song? You know, this, 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 I guess, age, everything is like representation. Everybody's always like representation, and the visual is important. But if there's a great play happening right there, and we're talking, and we don't pay attention, at the end we'll be like, maybe that was good, maybe that was bad, probably sucked, I wasn't paying attention. But good songs playing in the background, mm -hmm. you can hop in at any moment mm -hmm. and be like, that's good. Mm -hmm. So it was music. You know, yeah, mm -hmm. music. Straight up. I'm, I, it's music. It's, I and I should put you back in a place where you just like, you know, you hear a certain song, you know exactly what the fuck you was doing, where you yes. were, yep. no matter when you heard it. Yep. You know, if you was five years old, yep. if you was seven, yep. high school, grade school, mm -hmm. wherever you were, like, mm -hmm. if you if you hear a certain song, it just puts you right back in that yep. moment. Like, that's the best you, part. That's, you don't get that from nothing else. I look at them all now as like, you're trying to give people a buoy in the 
the sea of time mm -hmm. right. to like be like, I remember that. Mm -hmm. That was crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like it's like, oh, I saw that. That mm -hmm. was nuts. Mm -hmm. Like you have to make people happy that they are alive, right? Mm -hmm. now. Yes. That's absolutely. all it is. I know there are other people involved in making a song, but to make a TV show, it takes so many people. Oh, yeah. It's so, it's such a, it's big. But I admire my friends who make music who really could just go in a booth, lay their heart out, and boom, in a matter of a night, they have this piece of art to share with the whole world. I just think that's so powerful, that alone. I mean, by the time I finish explaining to 200 people exactly what the vision is, yeah. I don't know. I, Sometimes you wish you could just go in the booth and lay. Yes. <laughs> I told you that before, though. I told you, I mean, I love, I fucking love what I do, but sometimes I wish I could take some of my thoughts yeah. and put it on wax yeah. really? and make them rhyme. Yeah. But I get jealous yeah. of you guys. I was just about <laughs> I was to say that. that. I get jealous. What part? I get jealous because y'all got stats. <laughs> That's a good point. Like, That's the it's thing. Clear. It's like, a lot you of know, musicians. you're going to sit here and be like, oh, LeBron's not that good. It's like. I got stats yeah. to prove like, that. Like, you can say you don't like him, but you, yeah, you, but you say can't say he's, he's not, not good. this yeah. or the like numbers that. Reflect There's, the numbers reflect. It, and we see it, right? I there. agree you with that. You see it, and you saw it, and, yes. and this person jumped that far. Yes, and their and they're objective. Yeah. At the yeah. end of the day, there's so a scoreboard that says, they yeah. don't. fuck how everybody feels. This team won, and this player scored a bunch of touchdowns, and that's it. And that's it. The, the biggie. Beatles yeah. conversation. Yeah, right. was, people were so mad, and I don't think anybody in there was like big Beatles fans, right, but no. they were like, I have a, an opinion. An opinion. Yes. I have, I have a point of view on this, yeah. which is what music is. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, people, like the Michael Jackson Prince argument mm -hmm. is eternal because yeah. it really is speaking to something deep, yes. I think, in all of us Absolutely. about like, oh, like this one had a had a world that was kind of colorful and kind of had no death, and this uh -huh. one was kind of darker and yeah. had like, reality in it, and which one's better? Yes. And which one do you subscribe to? I mean, you oh, have, I'm sorry yeah, to cut ahead. you off. You have, you also, you just know certain artists, certain sounds, certain quality for all of us. Like when we want to, if it's a big meeting or we about to do a show or we about to do, you know exactly what song or a couple yeah. tracks that you can put you on. Yeah. And it'll lock you, to, it'll yeah. laser your ass in. But do you, can you ever listen to like, Jazz or something going to the game, you do that? Uh, I think no, you do I do it before, right? I don't, not before I run out, but I'm super excited when I get to the arena. This is way before the game. I get to the arena, man, probably like five hours before the game starts. So. And you're still nervous, know. you're too hype? Yeah, when I get there, I go right to the weight room, so then I, I listen to all hip hop when I'm in the weight room. Like DMX, crazy, like I've been on some DMX shit lately in the weight room. And then when I leave the weight room, I gotta calm down. And that's why I'm listening to like more like old school jazz or, or R&B. Well, I listen to a lot of uh, like Beethoven and shit too. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, like classical, like classical music too. Well, like underrated. Uh, Beethoven can really yeah, yeah. Turn yeah. It yeah. Up. I listen to a lot of right classical yeah. music like when I'm just trying to, yeah. and then like probably about 45 minutes hour before the game started. That's when I start wrapping it back up. What's your routine, Lamar? Uh, well, Hollywood come get me before every game. Oh, he, you ride the game every game? Me and Hollywood ride together ever since he's been in the league. We go to the game. Uh, How probably, early y'all get there? I'm probably, I, I like to get right to it. I don't like to wait before the game. Like, bro, five hours, I'm <laughs> probably 30 minutes. We got to be there an hour, actually, so an hour before the game. We got to be in the young, facility. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He went out the car, he put the uniform on. Yeah, like, oh, by the way, he probably got the uniform on in the car. Uh, <laughs> He's got to put his helmet like Pee Wee. Like Pee -wee. So they, got it, they got it in the locker room prepared for me. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get on that routine then. Because yeah. he been around for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> that's why. Yeah, for sure. So you pull up to the stadium an hour before the game. I'm listening to 26 Cool. Listen to all these guys, Kodak Black, Shimmy, and stuff like that. I'm locked in already, because I've been preparing all week. You already got the game playing all for the... I've been preparing all week. I done studied. But lately, like, since I've been in the league, defense has been changing. Like, they don't play me how they play other quarterbacks oh, and stuff. Can't, so. They can't. They yeah, can't so I got to get ready for a dog fight every game. Yeah. yeah. They're going to play their best. Yeah, they're, trying to, yeah, they're trying to keep your ass in the pocket. For sure, for QB sure. QB contained yeah. with a QB spy. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> They're doing it all now. Have you, started about, have you started thinking about changing shit like that up yet? Yeah, yeah, this year. This year, you know, it's my fifth year going to be in the league. This is about to be your fifth year? Yeah, it's going to be my fifth what year. What you want to change? Um, my approach, you know, my approach, my mindset, you know, um, just a lot mature. I, I felt like I was a little immature, not in a bad way, but just like... Yeah, you was young. Younger. Yeah, you young, yeah. Would you consider your, your career a failure if you didn't win a Super Bowl? <sighs> nah, nah. I wouldn't say I'm a failure. Because I, I knew where I was. You know, I know it was 
like many people in my family, they, you know, they had the opportunity, but they really didn't take advantage of it. A lot of my people was great football players, but they just, you know, our environment. Mm -hmm. Got caught up in the hood. Yeah, yeah. caught up. Yeah, yeah the hood. Mm -hmm. environment. We know it. Yeah, we know it very well. Yeah, you know, bro, my favorite basketball player. Mm -hmm. Basketball. Yeah, 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 for sure. That's why I wanted to be on the shop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, heck yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, so, but um, anything specifically you want to take from him potentially as you grow? Oh man, everything and being a champion. Like I feel like that's the that's the one thing you know I want to take from. If anything else, you know, being a champion and being a billionaire, you know, mm. that's just that's just what I've been thinking about ever since I was a little kid, being a billionaire and being a champion. LeBron, going from being a young phenom to being a champion, what's like two or three of the biggest things you would tell him like to break through that? No, he right there. I mean, at 25, that's, I'm, 25 was my first year in Miami, you know, and we lost my first year. I was 25 years old. Um, I think one of the one of the first ones that I started to learn that you can't really give a fuck about what people say no more, because everybody right, gonna right, fucking right. critique everything that you do, no matter what you do. That shit will creep into your mind, no matter if you believe it or not. It's right. wasted energy. Yeah, it's wasted energy. My yeah. first year in Miami, I was down there, like I was literally like, I wanted to prove everybody wrong, and I like literally lost myself in the moment. Mm -hmm. I lost yeah. myself, yep. and I got all the way to the championship that year. And lost, and the reason I, I knew we uh, afterwards, I was like, we lost because I wasn't. You start I, playing. I wasn't you, even there. You start lost, playing you take, chess. You take the whole blame for that. Yeah, like it wasn't you like present. You start playing present. chess with somebody who doesn't exist. Okay. Yeah. Did you ever tap into something that you feel is kind of bad to like oh, in, in you to yeah. win to like get into? Because like I I I I struggle with that like. I, I am naturally, like, petty. Petty? <laughs> <laughs> like, extremely petty. Like, Awaken My Love was literally because somebody was like, oh, he can't make a hit. Oh, and I was shit. like, oh, not only will I make a hit, I won't make a video for it. Pettiness has its place. It has its It makes you stronger. <laughs> okay. But I also know it's like, it's dark. But, it's not something that you well. should be... It's not something that it should be all of that, because then you, it, it's bad. But athletes actually oh. look for it. Yeah. They look yeah. for the things. Because sometimes you just need a little, like... Yeah. You need a, lo a little, like, yeah. fucking Mr. Yeah. Hyde to kick out. Exactly. <laughs> you need it. I, like, sometimes, I'll go out on a court sometimes, and, like, I don't know, maybe I didn't sleep well last night, or, you know, so you daughter may have had me, you know, kids, we might have been up late, you know, whatever, or I didn't just sleep well, and I just need a little, like, jump starter. I go out on the floor during warm-ups and I just, I'll just be looking for a LeBron hater. I just need one of them. <laughs> I'll be like, please, let me find that's this so, one that, LeBron hater. I know, hater. that's what I'm I saying. I need it. I'm, I'm looking in the for crowd it. for warm-ups. It's like 20 minutes before the game starts. I'm just looking really? like, oh, I found this one. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm, I'm ready. I'm be ready to go tonight. Clearly you found a lot or enough LeBron haters because yeah. he just Passed Kareem on scoring yeah, more right. points than anyone's ever scored. Thank you. <laughs> Regular season and playoffs. Yeah, that's good. Yes, I know you're so of the moment yeah. of like win, team, team, win, get yeah, better. Man. What did that mean to you? The crazy thing is, I'm not, I'm not like a, a natural scorer. I like, I loved like getting my guys involved. I've always been that way. I've always like the the, the point of seeing my teammate succeed off my pass or ha having like. I've always been that type of guy. And to sit at the top of the food chain and the most points scored in, in the history of the game is like, it's weird to me. Like, they don't never, they don't call, they don't ever call me. They don't ever call me. When they talk about the, the best scorers of all time, they never mention my name. Did that piss you off? Yeah, it pissed me off. But you're the crazy part. It pissed me off, but it's like, the crazy yeah, part is they don't ever bring my name into it. I don't. If I started talking about the best scorers, I wouldn't mention you. I would mention you, but a little bit. Yeah, but, but you're, you know. You're, you're an asshole. You're a LeBron so, yeah, he's a LeBron hater. Always, always, he's always been a LeBron hater. Like that's you know, I look for Mav every game. I try to find him. <laughs> like, up in the stands, he's like, there he is. There By the way, way, he knows. He knows because when they told him, he he wasn't a, a real quarterback. That's right. Right, right, right. right. Real talk. Wait, they what happened? He had one of the most storied, successful collegiate careers at quarterback anyone's ever had. And the pro teams are asking him if he wants to switch positions to play something else. It's very disrespectful. Yeah. But why? That's... Why did they ask you that? If... Because, no you know, because you don't, don't fit the description. You know. You do well, know why. Well, the truth is, there's a lot of history with them not wanting black guys to play quarterback. In football? You know, yeah. Tons of history. It started with, oh, they can't think quick enough. This, this, like, this is going way back, 70s, 80s. And it's still, 
it's dying off. Every day, y'all give me more reasons to. It's dying off, but it's still there. It's still there. That's why I need that championship. That's why I need that championship. Bro, I just started drinking at 36. Mm -hmm. Wow. Start. What made you start? Every fucking I Sunday, I get drunk. <laughs> I mean, during football season, that sounds like me. I'm more, I'm more sad about the season. Than, I hate the season. I hate when the season ends. Bro, I was so focused. I swear. In, I was so focused in my career all the time. <laughs> discipline and shit that I forgot about myself. I started, you know, doing music and started just so focused and disciplined to know where I'm heading, you know, to what was heading that I was just like, like this all the time. I wasn't looking around, you know, now that I'm, I just became a dad, a father. That's what did it. That's what did it. No, but, <laughs> that's what did it. <laughs> no, but, but the thing is, like, when, when the quarantine, you know, when all this shit started, I was like, what makes me happy as a person? I forgot because I was just so caught up in J Balvin. I knew what J Balvin makes me happy. What makes J Balvin? Yeah. Happy? You know, hits and, and, and you know, touring and shit. Touring and all the shit. And then shit. I was like, I'm locked up in, house, in the home and I'm like, oh shit, how to make me happy? What about Jose? Yeah. My name is Jose. You know, like, what makes Jose happy? You know, like, be with my friends or have a coffee, you know, like, yeah. go around some streets or, yeah. or go back to the hood where with my career started in Colombia. All those simple things is what really is priceless, and it's, 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 it's priceless. Yeah, for sure. So since that day, I'm going to do a list. Yeah. What I always wanted to do is I start skydiving. Oh, I'm jumping, bro. Shit. I'm skydiving, bro. Nah. Solo. <laughs> So you know, low. I started like I started yeah, drinking nah. every fucking Sunday. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> oh, man. I got my right by listening, but do I you like, drink then go skydiving? Wow. <laughs> no, no, I can't. No, no, no. I can't. I can't. Bro, <laughs> bro, 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 you bro, talked bro. about making hits, Jay. Is there a formula and for you guys too as artists to making something breakthrough or a hit? Is it like no, this is how nah. you can There's no formula because not everybody will be successful. Yes, of course. Yeah. You know, it's gonna be like 200 LeBrons then, you know, or 200 Drakes. Mm -hmm. Or 200 JCs or 200 J Balvin, you know, like, or Bad Bunnies, you know, like, there's no formula. So, when do you guys know, as a creators, when it's the one? I mean, you probably I had felt, the vision, but I, like, did you know it's gonna be as big as it is? No, but I felt that we were making something good. Everyone felt that we were making a good thing, and I think that's unique. I've been on other sets yeah. and shows, and you go, you know, this will be mid. Go this will be good. <laughs> like, you, you, you're going through the motions. Yeah, you're going through the motions. And that's okay, too, because that's, at the end of the day, this is a job. And I think audience members think we're super passionate about everything we do. And that would be a dream come true. But with my show, with Abbott Elementary, that I got to feel my passion within the capitalism of it all. <laughs> <laughs> Your show is super fucking funny. It's yeah. funny. I mean, it's hilarious. But you're also discussing, like, real matters. Right, like uh -huh. real serious issues. How do you balance comedy with serious issues, underprivileged schools and those types of things, teachers not getting paid, those types of things? Well, first of all, I think my job is to do comedy first. That's how I approach it, right? The job was to make a comedy. So to me, it means that the comedy has to come first, and that's that. And then as far as the messages and stuff, I don't like to tackle issues. Like, that sounds so terrible to me. I don't care. About <laughs> it's the worst. Do you know what I mean? I hate it. I hate it. I hate, I hate it. it. You don't want to begin from that place yeah. in your creation. Your hope is that you start making something and boom, that yeah, organically. That happens. organically comes out. You just want to make something good. I mean, like that's the thing. I was like her, her show is like, I, it's, talk, speaking on petty. Like when I watched <laughs> that show, I was like so jealous. I don't know. I was. I was like. I'm but, jealous but, of you every day. But that's what I'm saying in a like good a, way. That's how I knew way. it was good. Anytime yeah. I'm like, I sometimes I watch something that's like I I good, but I'm like, yeah, I wouldn't have done that. That's not. And I'm like yeah. watching. I'm like, I was so, I was so jealous because I was like, this is a good show, and this is, and it's hard to do that on network television. Very hard. Awesome. To do. That's what I'm saying. That's hard to do. Doing it on a big stage like that and not pulling punches and understanding yourself enough to get it through, mm -hmm. that's really hard. It is yeah. hard, and then, but what then helps make it possible is what you've done with Atlanta, what East has done with Insecure, what even the smaller shows like Flatbush Misdemeanors, those things all equate to finally, all the puzzle pieces come together. Coming together, because they either <laughs> let you be first, 
yeah. or less. <laughs> right, right, right. Like, you're either, <laughs> exactly. you're either living single, yep. <laughs> you know, or so somebody true. be like, that's a good idea. It's so we'll true. We'll make friends. You know, like, yes. kind of thing. Or you're last, where they're like, we tried it, and you can now try it, too, mm -hmm. like, kind of thing. So, like, when something works really well, it's like, why didn't we do this before? It's the same thing as the quarterback thing. It's mm -hmm. not even, like, a hatred thing or, like, mm -hmm. we don't want yeah, that. Yeah. It's, it's not. It's just there. Yeah. And you have to put it in a way where people don't... Because I'm like, Atlanta's a black show, but people don't think of it that way. Trust me, I am a young black girl asking a lot of all white people to just trust me. To trust me, to be like, weirdly, I got you, old white people. Trust me. <laughs> I don't want to got you, but I got you. <laughs> I don't want to got you. But I got, I got you. you. That's the realest shit, because, like, I'm going to be real with you. Like, once it really pops, once it really pops, they're going to be like, we got you. Like, which is the problem. Like, they're gonna be like, we understand it. Do you feel that with coaches? Do you ever have to tell the coach, like, coach, let me fucking cook, I got this one? Do you ever have yeah. to say that? Like, during yes. the game, like, coach. You do? In the two-minute offense, like, like, let me cook, man. Like, only because my coach wouldn't win, too, just as bad as I want to do. So, you know, he'd be on me, he, let's go, we got to do this right here. I'm like, I got it. Like, you don't got to <laughs> tell me, I got it. Because I'm already focused on, what, you know, what I got to do out there. So, it's like, I got it. Matter of oh. fact, the Miami game, when I did that, the first drive of the game, my coach, he was like, man, it might be some noise going on. You know, it's the first game of the season. The mics might go out. I'm like, I'm thinking he's just talking. I'm like, that ain't never happened before. It happened the first drive, so wow. now we like, he's trying to give me the number of the play for me to look at the wristband. I can't, I can't hear him. The night is going crazy in there. So I'm like, all right, this play, I went to tell him formation, lining up, and we just went to going. Like, People think it's a simple thing. Please do us the honor and call a, a, One a play. play in the If we're in your huddle, call a play right now. I don't want to call our plays on here on TV. No, just, <laughs> no, just, just, <laughs> just any play. You're not going to tell us what it play is. Like a, Can I want people to see how extensive your huddle, the play I'm trying is. to think of one. All right, gun double right, pass two jet, alley, can, three jet, this and that. And then go to, that's a can. The can is to kill the play if I see a... Uh, you want to change? Different. Yeah, change the play, basically. If I see a formation in the defense, on light to get us in a better position. And the crazy part is, Remember, he's doing this with 70,000 people screaming. I know. And the clock winding down. And when we walk out of the huddle, he may see, he has to make the decision, yep. oh, I don't like that. Forget all of that. I yes, forget yeah, all of that. Forget yeah, everything yeah, I just said. Everything I just said. Just can. Can. See? Can. can. Another play. Not something else now. Now, yeah. now he got to do now that. Now he got to do sign language to us. Yep. yep. And that's every play. That's, that's every play. play. That's insane to be a quarterback. I have a quick, can I ask a question? You can do whatever you want. So, we have a way we want people to feel when they watch our shows or hear our music and or see our art. Do you have a way you want people to feel when you play? Uh, being honest, I really can care less. Like, I'm going out there to just try to win. Man, like, you focus. Yeah, I'm locked in. I don't really care what the people are going to say, because they're going to say whatever, win or lose, regardless. Yeah. You know, so I, but, I care less. but it's not a good feeling when you're going to Pittsburgh. Do you not want their fans to leave, like, sad? Like... Absolutely. I got to get the dub. That's why I'm locked in. Yeah, that's why I'm locked in. You want the win for them? Yeah, for them. For them and my crowd. I'm going to have them sad while we over here celebrating. <laughs> you want to have the Yeah, because our, then... fans, our fans actually DM us and be like, oh, we can't let the Steelers win. They talk like, <laughs> my best friend is a Steelers fan, this and that. So definitely, I want to make you happy and make them sad, yeah. stuff like that, yeah. The only thing that bothers me is when I'm not able to play because of an injury. That bothers me when I'm not able to be on the floor. That bothers me, too. Because, you know... <laughs> I don't really like to watch it. Yeah, you know, I never, I never know <laughs> if it was that, like, that game or that city that a, a kid was coming to that was coming yeah. to see me and I'm not playing in that game. And that, that, that's the only thing that kind of bothers me. So, like, my coach has been trying to get me to sit down yeah. for a long time because they be wanting me to take off games, and I just, like, I don't, I, I don't want to do it. Why is that? I've never asked you that, right? You have MVPs, championships, all-stars, all the money, all the commercials, movie, you have everything. Why do you still have that 19 years later? It's just in me, man. I love competing. I love winning. I love just, like playing the game. Because, I, I mean, I know at some point I ain't gonna be able to play it no more. Well, at that level. Yeah. So, shit, why not, like, I'm trying to squeeze as much juice out of this motherfucking orange as I can. While I can, why not? And I'm still good. Mm-hmm. And you're still good. And if I was out there, if I was out there on some, some bullshit, like, yeah. nasty looking, Brian, I'd be out of been quick, yeah, but I'm yeah. still nice as fuck out there. So oh, it's like, yeah. I feel like every season for me is just like a, it's like a, it's like a movie. Every season is like a movie, and I'll just, I'm like living in it. Like, I'm the star. 
in the movie. Like, it feels dope as shit. I'm feeling like <laughs> Batman. You sound really present. It's so <laughs> present. I feel like Batman, yeah. Black Panther, all of them, yes. all of them, yes. every single, like, I feel that way. You, you're having a singular experience. Everybody's having a singular exactly. experience. Yeah. I remember, like, in 2018, I remember everybody was just like, yo, everybody's having a bad year except for Donald Glover. He's got all these things happening at the same time, and this is crazy. Mm -hmm. But my dad was sick. Exactly. Oh, shit. He was exactly. like, my, my dad died that year. Yeah. Like, my grandfather died last week, and wow. yeah. it's OK. But it's it's at, OK. Look at the way the world is but looking at Everybody's you know, like, you're on top of the world, mm -hmm. and the same thing happens when you fail, when people are like, oh, you're failed. Like, but I got a family. Exactly. I have people who actually love me. I have. Yeah. And I think about this with you because you're young, you're 25, but that life you're going to create for yourself that's yours, that's going to be more important. Protected. I know it doesn't sound important now, <laughs> but that will be more important than winning a championship. And it's not right now, so I'm not telling you to make it more important right now. But when you build your little world, your little bubble that no one can fuck with, you can say you don't like my show, you can say you don't like me. I don't give a fuck. This is my little world. This is my bubble of love that no one can... You can't touch it. You cannot touch it. I don't want to die for them to miss me. Yes, I see the thing. Yo, I'm laughing. If, thinking about him in, like, a therapy session, his therapist's like, OK, Jose, what makes you happy? <laughs> Drinking. <laughs> <It's such a laughs>